This is a tripod robot. It is not as cool as my Hexapod and it's definitely heavier than my robot dog. But unlike those projects, I was able to build this entire robot in a single day. I got to do kit modeling, design the power circuit and even code the robot at 5 am in the morning. So I hope you like engineering because I'm gonna show you everything I did to build this robot, starting from R0. I opened up Fusion 360 and started kit modeling. Since 3D printing takes a shit ton of time, I want to make the physical model of the robot first and then I can worry about the electronics and the code. For the robot, I decided I'm gonna build a tripod and I started by modeling a single leg. It's gonna have 3 degrees of freedom, which means 3 motors and 3 lengths. And I'm trying to model them as simple as possible. A tripod has only 3 legs, which means less stuff to print and less motors to power. This sounds great, but it also has a giant disadvantage. It's super unstable. Every time the robot wants to take a step, only two legs are gonna be touching the ground at the same time and it's just gonna want to fall over. So I'm gonna have to either take super quick steps or maybe code the robot to move its center of mass around, something like that. I haven't decided yet and that's a problem for future me. When I was modeling this leg, I made sure to use parameters for all the main dimensions, L1, L2 and L3. If I change L3 to 100 millimeters, the link gets shorter. And that's because I put L3 as the dimension instead of number. This is very useful because I can model the whole robot and then if I want to change the link length, I just update the parameter instead of going back into the design and updating it there. It's about 1 pm, which means that modeling this leg took me about an hour and a half. It looks pretty shit, yeah. Whatever. I'm gonna start printing all of these parts and in the meantime I'm gonna model the body. Modeling the body was pretty straightforward. I started by creating a hexagon, then I extended three sides to add some space for the servo motors. I added holes for them and in the end I just used a shell feature to hollow it out. Modeling the top part of the body was pretty similar. I again started with a hexagon, added some mounting holes, chamfers to make it look better and in the end I added some clearance just so the legs don't smash into the body when they move sideways. It's about 3 pm, the leg has been printed. In the meantime I managed to model the whole robot. I think I'm going to start printing the second leg and assemble this one in the meantime. It's half past 3, I just tested the leg and it works fine. So while I'm waiting for the other two legs to finish printing, I'm going to solve inverse kinematics. Right now I can set the motor angles and the foot of the robot will move somewhere in 3D space. This is not actually useful because to make the robot take steps, I need kind of the opposite. I need to set the XYZ position of the foot and let the ESP calculate the motor angles. And this is called inverse kinematics. By the way, sorry for the shitty lighting, the printer is loud as fuck, which is why I'm gonna solve the inverse kinematics in my fucking kitchen. This is the leg, we want the foot to be at this position X and Y. From this position, we want to calculate the motor angles theta 2 and theta 3. To do that, we're gonna use Pythagoras and cosine law. First, I'm gonna create this triangle. Now I'm going to solve this length. It's just gonna be the square root of d coordinates squared, because here we've got the right triangle. We are going to also calculate this angle because that is going to help us calculate theta 2. I'm going to call this alpha 2. We can just take the arc tangent of y over z. I actually meant to say y over x. Now we're going to use cosine law to get this angle. I'm going to call it beta 2. Now we know alpha 2 and beta 2. We can add them up to get theta 2 and we got our first motor angle. Now I'm gonna use cosine law again to get theta 3. Theta 3 is just gonna be, I'm gonna write it in radians, pi minus gamma 3. And we got our two motor angles. Right now I solved the leg like this. Now I'm gonna look at it from the top and solved the first motor angle. So this is the leg, again we input the position, so x and z coordinates. These are the two joints, these two. And this length, that's just the first link, so that's this one. 
we are interested in this angle which I'm gonna call theta 1. Theta 1 is gonna be the arc tangent of z over x. Now we need to make some corrections. So if you look at this simple 2D mechanism, this mechanism, it's not actually here, but it's rotated. So it needs to be longer to account for the rotation. So instead of using x in this equation, we have to change that. So x to d, it's gonna be this length. So if you take this x to d and you multiply it by cosine of theta one, you get the projection into x axis, which is x. So by dividing it, you get from x to x to d. Here, the coordinate system starts at this joint, but here it doesn't start at this joint, it starts here. So we need to subtract L1 from the X as well. By the way, all the files for this robot are gonna be on my Patreon for free. At this point, it was half past four, and before testing the IK, I decided to make a transmitter first. So I got two ESP32 boards, one is gonna be the transmitter, and the other one is gonna be the receiver slash the robot. The transmitter is gonna read joystick values and send them to the receiver through ESP now. The ESP boards have wireless communication built into them, so we just need to get the address of the receiver and write some code. To get the address of the receiver ESP, I'm just gonna run this code. It's actually code from my robot dog project. Is this cheating? Probably, but I don't have much time and I didn't write this code anyway. So I'm going to select my ESP, upload the code. I can just press the reset button on my ESP. And then in the serial monitor, I can read out the MAC address. At this point it was 5 p.m. and since I had the address of the receiver ESP, I decided to use it and write a test code that is gonna send values from the transmitter to the receiver. This is the transmitter code, here I have the receiver address of the ESP I got before and here I got a structure. Structure is basically a custom data type. In the structure I put all of the values I'm gonna be sending, the X and Y values of the joystick and these are integer types. This code is just a general ESP now code which you can copy from the internet, I use ChatGPT. Here I'm just sending values from 0 to 420. This is just to test out the code. And on the receiver end, you create the same data packet. This is the data you're gonna receive. And then you can use it like data dot and you choose the integer you want to read. Since the ESP now communication worked, I connected a joystick to the transmitter ESP and sent its values over to the receiver. For the joystick, I got three pins, two analog pins that read the X and Y values of the joystick, and then one digital pin which reads the switch. So if you press the joystick, it uh, presses a button. I added the button to the data packet, so now I'm sending three values through ESP now. Then I just choose the pin mode for the digital pin, that's for the button. And in the loop, I just use analog read function to read the voltage of the analog pin which is connected to the joystick and that way I get the x and y values and I also get the button value. Then I just sent it through ESP now and on the receiver end this is what the code looks like. I also added the button to this data packet and I just print out the values. It's half past six and I just finished making the transmitter for my robot. So you can see it receives the values if I press the switch, it switches from zero to one. If I move the joystick, you can see the values change to you. With the transmitter finished, I started making the power circuit, which is gonna connect the battery's voltage and ground to the 97 motors. I did this by taking two rows of pin headers. I connected one row to ground, second row to voltage, and to carry out the PWM signal, which you need to set the angle of the servo motors, I just use a cable and connected each servo motor to a digital pin on the ESP32. As for turning the robot on and off, I just use a switch. So the battery's ground is always connected to the power circuit, but the voltage goes through the switch first, so it is connected only when the switch is on. If this sounds like too many cable connections and you actually like having your electronics in order, you should check out PCBWay, which is my sponsor. Let me show you just how easy it is to buy PCBs. Plug in your PCB dimensions, quantity and color. 
click order and then you will actually see the manufacturing process in real time. Just like these PCBs that are being made for my bipedal robot. Right now PCBWay is also running a design contest. Basically you want to create a CAD model of this bird character or any original character you want. Then you send in the STL or step files and you can win $500. So maybe if you're a student or you're learning CAD, this is a great opportunity and you even got some nice motivation. The power circuit is finished, which is nice because I fucking hate soldering. And right now I want to make sure that nothing is short circuited. Let's probe the ground. If I touch the ground pins, it should beep. Nice. And if I touch the positive pins, it shouldn't beep. Nice. This means I can start playing with this slack. I'm going to implement the inverse kinematics and connect these three servo motors to the power. It's half past nine. I implemented the equations and now I'm going to do the first test. So this is gonna test the power circuit and also my code. Turns out I had the angles in radians, but I needed them in degrees. <laughs> Fuck. I am 13 hours in, the lower body has been printed. I have spent the last 4 hours trying to fix the inverse kinematics. I think it works now. The issue ended up being this piece of shit of a joystick. It's got a drift of about 40%, which is just insanely bad. So when I was trying to move the leg left and right, it jumped much more than I expected and the leg went out of the workspace. Never mind, I think the inverse kinematics work, so I'm going to code the step trajectory. Here's the code for the inverse kinematics. So here I got the link lengths. These are the equations I derived earlier. At the end, I just changed the units from radians to degrees. All right, we got 1 a.m., which means I am about 14 hours in. Yeah, I think I'm going to skip school tomorrow. Anyway, I coded the stepping trajectory and it works pretty well. To make the leg take steps, I wrote this Python code, which generates me a bunch of points. At the bottom, it's a straight line. At the top, it's a cosine wave. The Arduino code basically tells the leg to move to one of these points. Then it waits maybe 10 milliseconds and moves to another point. And it does this over and over, such that you get the stepping trajectory. For the straight line, it's 67 points long. For the cosine curve, it's just 33 points. So the leg spends two thirds of the time on the ground, so that when the tripod is walking, at each time step, only one leg is above the ground. So it's basically gonna spend a lot of time at the bottom and then take a quick step. That way it's not gonna fall over. Then I just copy these points into my Arduino code. After I get the X, Y and Z, I just use the IK function to get data 1, 2 and 3. Then I use this custom write to 70 function. Servo motors are usually 180 degrees and you can use library servo.h I think to write the angle. But for 270 degree servo motors you need to write this function. Then you just choose the servo motor and assign the angle. You actually need to assign a different angle than what you calculated from IK. If you have a servo motor like this, this position is the middle angle, it's not zero. So this angle is gonna be 270 divided by two, which is 145. That's why I add this middle angle. So yeah, this leg is, well, it's not fully programmed because it steps only in one direction. And since the tripod has three legs offset by 120 degrees, I'm gonna need to be able to rotate the leg path by the tip of the point. So I still got some coding to do, but I'm coming very close to finishing this. 3 a.m. Holy shit. I made a decent amount of progress. I can turn on the leg and it's gonna start moving. And I can change the angle, so right now it's stepping in this plane. And with this joystick I can change the angle. Let's check the code. Here I define the leg path, this is like the shape of it and the position. Here I got the two vectors and then I created this function, rotate around point. Normally when you use rotational matrices, you have a point and you rotate the point around origin. What I need to do is something different. Imagine this is the center of the robot. This is the leg path. So right now the robot would move in this direction. But if I want the robot to move, let's say here, I need to rotate the leg path around this point. And that's what I'm using this function for. You choose the point you want to rotate, then you choose the pivot point, then the angle, and then you update the old coordinates. 
for this angle I'm using the angle from the joystick and I get that by just taking the arc tangent of y over x although it doesn't really work because the joystick is trash. After polishing the coat I had everything I needed and all that was left to do was to assemble the robot at 3 am in the morning. This robot is much bigger than I expected. I'm just uploading the final version of the code. So what I did is with this joystick, I can control the angle the leg path traces. That way I can control which way the robot walks. Then I took this path and I offset it by 120 degrees. Put it there. 120 degrees, put it there. And I also offset the cycle. So when this leg falls to the ground, this leg is going to lift up. And then that one and the cycle is going to repeat. To code the movement of the whole robot, I just took the code for leg 1. So firstly I changed the servo motors to servo 4, 5 and 6. Then I changed the iteration. So instead of using I as the iteration, I add 33 to it and then I take the reminder after division by 100. That way when I is at the zero, this is gonna be at 43 and then it's gonna overflow and 100. This way the leg movement is gonna be offset and when one leg just touches the ground, another leg is gonna lift up. I also changed the angles, so instead of using the angle from the joystick, I add 120 degrees to that and that's because of the geometry of the robot. Then for leg 3 I do the same thing, but I add 67 to the iteration, I add 240 to the angle and that's basically it. So with this, the whole robot is coded. And the cherry on top, although I have no fucking idea how I'm gonna close this. I'm actually surprised this doesn't even look bad. It's 5 a.m., which means I'm about 17 hours in. Now I'm going to run the first walking test. Let's see how it goes. I mean, it could be better. Is it the best robot ever? Yes, this robot is super cool. Tomorrow I'm gonna film some nicer shots in the daylight, so you guys can actually see how the robot works. And I'm gonna play with the code a little bit. Today marks the end of this challenge. This is what I was able to build in a single day and I'm pretty happy with that. So the main problem with this robot is that it takes just a fraction of a second to tip over. That's why it wobbles so much and it doesn't walk well. What I decided to do is actually to tip the robot over. Not only does it look cooler, but it should be more stable because it's gonna have a larger moment of inertia. Taller things fall over slowly. Then what I can do even more is to derive inverse kinematics for the body. That way when it wants to take the step, for example, if it wants to lift this leg, the body would move here and then it would be more stable. So that's a few things I can do to make this walk better. But the first thing I'm gonna do is just turn it over and see if that helps. It kind of works, but it's not really usable. I think you could make it a lot better if you added a fourth leg. Maybe if you played with the code, you could probably get this to work reasonably. I hope you liked this challenge, it was really fun. And I think it's useful to show the whole process of building this robot. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.